Hello students, welcome to EPG Paatshala. I am Vinodini Kapoor, teaching in the Faculty of Management in Chandigarh. Today, we will discuss about the module System Implementation under the paper Management Information System. After completion of this module, students will be able to develop an understanding of the implementation stage of the STLC cycle. They will be in a position to list what are the different steps involved in the implementation phase and understand what are different types of implementations and in what conditions is it applicable. They will be able to outline what are considerations of system implementation and comprehend the key elements of a successful system implementation. If a customer wants a gaming application, the developer must program the application to perform the customer's gaming requirement. Now, as a team develops the code, they must follow specific coding requirements. The customer requirement calls for specific computer programming language or upgrades and the developers need to run the application to ensure that they function properly. Hence, there lies a need to ensure that why application or software or information system should function as per its objectives. The implementation phase is the fifth stage of the system development life cycle and it follows the development stage. It is during the implementation that the project team creates the actual product. And product implementation can be an exciting phase for the customer because it's here that their idea becomes somewhat tangible. Project developers begin building and coding the software. And hence, implementation of a system is as much important as creation of the system itself. Unsuccessful implementation can easily negate the work done in the initial phases and bring the system to a halt. The technical and the managerial skills are very essential for implementers to work as change agents and the sequence of the steps in the various stages together make the new system operational. Implementation hence is an activity that should carefully be managed and requires client intervention and interaction at every particular stage. The implementers need full support and cooperation of the end user and the information system department to successfully execute the implementation. The theory here gets converted into practical use as it requires putting a planned system into action. The stage of system development is in which hardware and software are actually acquired, developed and installed. The system is tested and documented and people are trained to operate and use the system. Implementation takes all possible steps to ensure that the upcoming system development and transition occurs smoothly, efficiently and flawlessly. Introducing technological change into an organization presents a different set of challenges to management that does the work of competent project administration. Very frequently, managers who are responsible for spearheading a technical innovation into a routine use are much better equipped by education and experience to guide innovations development than to manage its implementation. Organizations should be adaptable in order to maintain the competitive market conditions, to increase productivity and reconfigure due to changing workforce, the global business environment and the e-commerce development. Studies indicate that one of the most important reasons that differentiate organizations from each other is the degree of information technology application in their organizational activities.
we will now discuss what are the different steps involved in the implementation phase as you can see the system development life cycle process the implementation stage is the fifth stage of the stlc cycle and this process defines how the information system should actually be built that is the physical system design it ensures that the information system is operational and usable and it meets the quality standards after having the user acceptance of the new system developed implementation phase begins it is a stage of a project during which theory is turned to practice the major steps involved in the implementation phase as we see in the diagram are firstly acquisition of hardware software and services secondly the conversion stage thirdly the user training and finally system documentation so in the very first stage the hardware and the relevant software that is required for running the system must be made fully operational before its implementation the system is built and tested to ensure that it is performing as per its design the cost of fixing the bugs can be immense and testing is one of the most critical steps in the implementation most organizations spend much more time and attention on testing rather than on writing the programs in the very first place the second or the conversion is again also of most critical and expensive activities of the stlc data from the old system needs to be converted to operate in the new format of the new system the database needs to set up with security and recovery procedures that are fully defined during this particular phase all of the programs of the system are loaded onto the user's computer after loading the system training of the user will start and the important topics of the training include how to execute a particular package how to enter data the process of data and how to take out the reports implementation is a much larger issue than the installation the new system may get installed but without proper training of users it may not be put to good use so implementation is a wider concept and focuses on installation and the hand holding part of the transition process training needs assessment is done here to understand what are the training needs of the users a program is planned and the required training is given it is an important part of the implementation process and helps in reducing resistance to change which is the related behavior among the user community the training also helps users to appreciate few features of the new program and build trust and appreciation for the new system system documentation includes all of the relevant technical documents that are delivered during the project they provide documentation which is necessary to operate and maintain the system so this comprises of the implementation notice which formally requests approval for changes in the system made during the implementation phase then there is the readiness document now this consolidates summary information regarding the current status of the system and the project and provides decision makers with the information necessary it may include a checklist of all work products acceptance test results other indicators of success measures and deliverable acceptance a post implementation review report summarizes assessment of the implementation activities at the end of the implementation phase now this summarizes assessment of the implementation activities and evaluates effectiveness of the system after it has been in production it helps to determine if the system does what it is designed to do now let us look at the types of implementation once a new software product has been produced it must be installed and then implemented on site there are a number of ways to introduce a new system and each of these suit different particular conditions usually implementation involves conversion from an old system to a new system and is designed to replace the new system the four particular methods that we have of conversion or implementation are firstly 
the direct cutover method, the parallel conversion method, the phased method, and the pilot method. So we first look at the direct cutover method. This method involves the old system to be completely dropped and the new system that is being completely implemented at the same time. Now the old system is no longer available. As a consequence of this, you must be absolutely sure that the new system is totally functional and operational. This conversion method is used when it is not feasible to continue the two systems together. So any data to be used in the new system must be converted and imported from the old one. Users must be fully trained in the operation of the new one before the conversion takes place. So what we see here in the diagram is that the old system is being replaced altogether by the new system. The parallel conversion phase. This method of implementation involves both of the systems together for a certain period of time. It allows any major problems with the new system to be encountered without loss of data. Parallel conversion will also mean students that users have time to familiarize themselves with the new system. So here, the old one will remain as the operational one as a backup to the new system. Once the new system is found to be meeting requirements, then operation of the old one can eventually stop. This method involves double the workload for users as they have to maintain performance of both of the systems together. However, this implementation is very useful when product is of a critical nature and dire consequences will result if the new system was to fail. So by continuing the operations of the old one, the crucial nature of the data gets protected, as we see in the diagram here. The phased method of implementation is the third one, and it involves a very gradual introduction of the new system, while the old one is being progressively discarded, as shown in the diagram here. It can be achieved by introducing new parts of the new product, while at the same time the older parts will be replaced or removed. Phase conversion is used because the product as a whole is still under development. Completed modules are released for customers as they become available. A phased conversion will also mean that for a larger business conglomerate, the conversion process becomes much more easier and manageable. Parts of the total system are introduced systematically across boundaries and each part replaces a component of the old one. Over a certain period of time, the complete system will get converted. Pilot, when the pilot method of implementation or conversion, the new system is installed for a small number of users. When they learn, use and evaluate the new system, then it is deemed to be performing correctly and the system is installed and used by all. Now this method is very useful for new products because it ensures functionality at a level that can perform in a real operational setting. The pilot method also allows a base of users to learn the new system. Users can then assist with the training of the others while the new method has been fully implemented. The pilot conversion method can be viewed as the final testing of the product. Both the developer and the customer are able to evaluate product in an operational environment prior to the full implementation. Important considerations for system implementation. The interaction of technology and the organization lays a broad concept and lays the groundwork for many of the other factors for consideration. User involvement and participation is influenced by a number of variables that must carefully be balanced in order to ensure success of involvement. Choosing system analysts. Now they are those who manage the technological change and must serve both the technical developers as well as the implementers. As a rule, the organization develops the technology and then hands it over to the users who are less technically skilled but are quite knowledgeable about their own areas of application. 
In practice, however, the user organization is often not willing or even able to take on responsibility for the technology at that particular point in the evolution at which the development group wants to hand it over. The person who is responsible for implementation is either located in the developing organization, the user organization or in some intermediary position and has to design the handoff so that it is almost invisible. That is, before the baton changes hands, the runners should have been running in parallel for a long time. The implementation manager has to integrate perspectives and needs of both the developers as well as the users. Adopting a marketing perspective. Now, what does this mean? By adoption of a marketing perspective actually encourages implementation managers to seek user involvement in the early identification and enhancement of the fit between product and the end user. Preparation of the user organization to receive the innovation and then shifting ownership of the innovation to the end users. Planning is more able to be controlled by project managers than other successful factors and involving as many critical components. Successful implementation requires not only heavy investment by developers early in the project, but a sustained level of investment in the resources of user organizations. Implementation managers must develop an iterative, almost accordion-like framework to guide decisions about when and how to collect needed information from all groups affected by the innovation. Now what information is important and who actually has it? It may vary at different stages of the implementation process, but someone must coordinate the iterative work of gathering it and then someone is the implementation manager. A project manager should understand not only the business but also how to run a system implementation project. At times, there are two project managers on the project and a business side project manager and a system side project manager. The project manager coordinates all of the activities of the team members, manages the project plan and reports to the steering committee. Vendor selection. Software products should not be considered in a vacuum because companies need to weigh what is the implication of the various options that they have. Can the system be implemented and integrated effectively? Will they provide maximum value for the software and the process? Is the system really scalable? Is the management confident that changes in the business environment will have a little or no effect on the vendor's future servicing of the solution? So once a prospective buyer has narrowed the choice of the best solution, a consultant can help the company compare alternatives and negotiate the most favorable terms with the suited solution provider. Hiring consultants. Organizations should engage consultants for implementation and integration. Internal IT resources may have successful managed internal development projects, but implementing a business focused package requires a different skill set. In the end, what do organizations gain from investment of time and money is the business performance management implementation. The most obvious and concrete benefit are shortened closing cycle, a real-time information related to key metrics, informed decision makers, and an improved bottom line. As organizations that are characteristic in size, influence adoption of the MIS application, the adoption of certain technologies may appear more appropriate for the larger firms because of the large capital investment and the human resources involved in implementation and operation of such technologies. Smaller firms are less affected by organizational inertia as they grow greater degree of involvement of the organizational members especially the top management during the implementation. Ready-to-use software and less expensive equipment are more attractive to smaller firms.
Let's take a brief example of the case of General Electronics. So when GE set up its state-of-art automated dishwasher plant, it originally justified the cost of the basis of savings over a period of time. But the plant has experienced payoffs from the investment in anticipated ways. Quality of the product improved. Lower management manufacturing cost led to an expansion of the market share. And the plant proved able to serve as a manufacturing site for other products. So each time managers document such non-traditional benefits, they make it easier to justify similar investments later. We'll now take up an interesting case of the ERP implementation failure at Hershey's. The background of this particular case will give an overview of Hershey's as an organization that was founded way back in 1876 and was the largest chocolate manufacturer in North America. They implemented the SAP R3 ERP software, the Manugistics soft Supply Chain Management, Siebel CRM, and IBM Global Service to manage integrations between the various systems. Now this was a whooping cost of $10 million. They recommended project implementation time for the project to be four years, while Hershey's demanded just 2.5 years. They decided to go with the Big Bang approach instead of a phased approach of implementation. Now let us see what happened as an impact of the ERP failure. There were problems pertaining to order fulfillment, processing and shipping started to emerge. So while they had enough stock in their inventory, it could not be delivered to the end customer. They were not able to meet commitment of delivery on time and several distributors who had ordered the products could not supply them to the retailer in time. The result of this was that they lost their credibility in the market and when they announced that this was because of the malfunctioning of the ERP system, their stock prices plunged to 8% on a single day and profits dropped to 19%. It affected sales by decreasing it to 12%, which completely shook the company. So what we see is what exactly went wrong with Hershey's was that they squeezed their deadlines. There was completely wrong timing of distribution of stock. Instead of the phased approach, the Big Bang approach was incorporated, which led to this particular halt. And the data that was entered into the ERP system was not done in a corrected way. The reason for failure eventually was over squeezing of the implementation schedule and ineffective project management. They were also sacrificing system testing for the sake of expediency. What lesson we learned here is that system implementation should not be forced onto an unreasonable timeline. Over squeezing the implementation schedule is a way to overlook critical issues. Testing phases should also never be compromised. And when companies time their cutover during the slow business periods, the companies itself give more slack time and iron out system kinds. This is aimed at minimizing exposures due to damages caused by undetected errors and less than perfectly trained costs and users. Children, we'll now look at what are the key elements of successfully implementing a system. First and foremost, communication. Now this plays a pivotal role in the implementation and without proper communication, especially from the top of the management down below, on the installation and implementation is very important and without this change management can get very difficult. The upper management support is again very important to be involved in the financial support of a system project. Now some executives will focus only on the financial justification and the payback of the project. However, the key to a successful implementation is to also convince them of the business advantage of this particular system change. Success of the project depends on the executive team believing that the new system will provide the company with a competitive advantage to service customers better. The operation leadership. 
there should be a broad representation of the group in the project to ensure that all perspectives are accounted for during the design and the implementation. Testing is to make sure that the system is functioning as it is designed and must thoroughly be tested. A test plan should be detailed as soon as the designs are completed and testing resources should be focused on the main functionality of the system. Avoiding common error of focus is too much of your testing efforts on the complex functionality and may only be used as a small percentage of that particular time prior to the actual hands-on training. The hands-on end unit training is more effective when delivered as close to the cutover as feasible in order to achieve optimal information retention. Metrics. The project is likely justified because it will make improvements to processes. Utilizing points of comparison can provide valuable tools in diagnosing problem areas, so it is necessary to validate the baseline metrics well before the conversion. Okay students, we'll now summarize what we have learned in the module here. MIS is one of the most important achievements in the area of administrative work because it is providing us reliable, accurate, relevant and complete information to managers towards enhancing of the organizational performance in organizations. However, MIS is as competent and efficient as it is implemented and rolled out. Successful implementation requires a complex blend of skills ranging from the technology integration to the organizational transformation. Clearly, implementing new business processes along the new technology adds complexity to the initiative and the process issues should be given as much consideration as the technology concerns, if not more, throughout this exercise. Implementation is really engagement management because it pulls together the IT and the technical requirements, the business end users and their functional requirements with the vendor and the product expertise. It also joins the third party experts while overseeing that everyone's priority, deliverables and schedules are in place together. At the same time, the companies also need to be sure that there is no short change end user education and system rollout. The sooner the key personnel are using the system to the fullest, the more quickly the organization will realize projects benefits, the initial and the ongoing training needs as well as system oversight and service. It should be planned before the software is rolled out to the end users. Thank you.